A really common concept that people seem to struggle with when they're working in C is pointers. And this is pretty understandable because they are slightly weird, to be fair. Um, in order to understand pointers, the first thing that you need to be aware of is that any program you will ever write has some amount of memory that's allocated to it by the computer. Right? So when you create an integer or you create a float, it has to go somewhere. Right? It, it is, it's not just in the ether. So the computer gives you some block of RAM that your application can use. So when I go int x and then I say x is equal to 4, that value goes somewhere in this block. So let's say this becomes x here. This is x equals to 4. Okay? Great. And if at some point later in my program I change the value of x so that x is now equal to 5, we just go back up here and we rewrite this so that x is equal to 5. And that's the standard interaction model that really anyone who's done any kind of programming is used to. You have a variable, you put a value in it, and when you need to access that value, it's just sitting there for you. Where pointers get slightly weird, right, is pointers don't store that value. Now, a computer is a completely logical machine. So in order to find where it put that value of x, it gives it an address, right? These are logical addresses. You can see here they increment in this case. It tends to be some block, some contiguous block of memory. When we create a pointer, we're not actually storing a value anymore, or we're not storing a value like this anymore. What we're storing is the address of another value. So P still gets some place in memory. This could be P here. Okay, but we can't say that P is equal to X. Right? We can't do that. Because P is a pointer and X is an integer. But what we can say is that P is equal to the address of X. And we do that using the ampersand symbol. P is equal to the address of x. So p, in this case, x has the address 0, x is 0. So p will get the value 0, x, 0. So p is pointing to where we can find x. Using pointers to point to a value when we already know where that value is can, can seem pretty pointless. And I guess it kind of is. I mean, there, there are maybe occasions where you do it, um, I guess you could use it to iterate over an array. Um, but, you know, for the most part, this is kind of a silly use of a pointer. Where we typically tend to use pointers is when we're dealing with a thing called dynamic memory allocation. And dynamic memory allocation is basically when we don't know how much memory our program is going to need when we run. So, we figure it out. And then we tell the computer, listen, I need enough space to store 10 integers. Can you, can you find that space and give it to me? So let's, let's do a really trivial example, right? Let's say uh, x is a value that's given to us by the user. We get them to type in a value, and whatever that value is, we're going to create an array of that size. Okay? So our users typed in x, and we got the value 5. Great. What we do is we use a function called malloc which stands for memory allocate. And we go size of an int, because we need an integer's amount of space, multiplied by the value in x. All right? So this will give us five blocks, and it will allocate them specifically for us to use for our new array. Now, what malloc does is it goes off to our memory over here, and it looks up and down, and it tries to find some space where it can fit five integers side by side. So in this case, one, two, three, four, five. So it allocates these. These become our new array. Okay? And then malloc returns the address of the blocks that it has set aside, it returns this value to. 
So you don't get the block back, you get the address back. Malloc tells you where it found enough memory for you to use. And that's why we say P is equal to malloc. So we get a pointer. And now we can find this piece of dynamically allocated memory and we can start to do things with it. So for example, we could say P square bracket zero equals four. And what that actually means is take the address in P, add zero to it, and put the value four in there. So the address in P, because malloc returned two, the address in P is two. And of course, two plus zero is two. So in this memory address, we store the value four. We could also say P square bracket three equals 17. So this is the value stored in P plus three equals 17, which is two plus three is zero x five, and we put 17 in there. Now, what happens if we try to access some piece of memory outside of this block that was allocated to us? This is when bad things can start to happen. So if I say P8, which is actually off the bottom of the stack here, uh, but if I say P8, I've tried to access something outside of the block of memory that was allocated to me, and that's where we get things like segmentation faults, because we tried to access invalid memory. Um, but because you have that responsibility with pointers, uh, where we're really allocating memory where we can find it, it's up to us to be responsible with that and, and take care to use proper practice. So we take care not to go off the end of that memory, uh, we take care not to request more memory than our computer can manage. Uh, I mean, if you have a user who maliciously tries to allocate 16 gigabytes, uh, they're going to crash the program or the computer, one or the other. And of course, when you allocate memory, you should always remember to free it when you're done with it. Now, truthfully, this isn't a very accurate model of how memory works. Typically, these values get allocated on a thing called the stack, and these values get allocated on a thing called the heap, which grows from a different direction. But for the purposes of this trivial example of what a pointer is, this will work. And if you keep this model in your head, when you're allocating memory, when you're manipulating memory, or when you're storing an address to a variable, uh, you should be okay, at least for beginner programs.